since I'm alive. I hope so. We will check on YouTube. Hello, everyone. I hope I, you, you hear me. Mm. So I assume you hear me. And let's start our today's broadcast about making technical drawings uh, because I thought maybe it will be interesting for some people to see how I draw things because I made quite a lot of drawings recently in recent years for various purposes. So this is a uh, making technical graphics the webinar about just an idea that came to my mind two weeks or one week ago. So just quite spontaneous uh, thing to show you how I'm drawing things to make graphics. And let's start simply. Maybe a few things about me. I'm why 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 the idea to to do something like that. In general, I am a let's say consultant, trainer, blogger, speaker. I do a lot of community related things. So I have a lot of opportunities to draw something, for example, for blog posts. I made, I wrote this Pro.NET memory management book, which is also quite big and contained a lot of images and drawings, like maybe something above 100 technical drawings. So I gained some experience doing all of that. And uh, in general, I'm a guy related to .NET performance. Maybe you know you don't know me from that side. I don't know who you are. So you can say hello and say from what background you are, whether are you programmers or I don't know, just uh, people that are interested in drawings or technical drawings. So you can say hello to, to me on the chat that I will just hear that and see that somewhere is on the other side. So, uh, OK, uh, what I'm going to cover today is drawing of technical things related to software architecture, uh, in general, software engineering, let's say. So why do we need drawings uh, at the first place? So obviously, as I said, most typical, probably interesting way of consuming and you, your need for drawings is that you have some uh, blogs and you need to write, you want to write some blog posts. And it is so nice to have pictures, drawings there. So uh, it is also quite of one of the main reasons for me to make drawings recently. Uh, also, maybe you are authoring some materials, maybe they are free, maybe they are just paid, it doesn't matter, but probably you need to visualize something like architecture or uh, your algorithms, ideas. I was heavily involved in, in visualizing how .NET memory management works, for example. So it is really good to see something instead of describing it in a thousand words. So, OK, hello for everyone. I see some hello, so hello, hello from Baku, hello Mariusz, hello Tomasz, Jędrusz, Jędrusz probably, and uh, uh, nice to see you, that someone is listening to me and watching me. So uh, obviously documentation is also the reason, although we don't like, we probably we don't like writing documentation, sometimes drawing, uh, one drawing can be much, much better uh, documentation than a thousand words. And also maybe you are authoring some books or maybe you want to write some book or maybe you are just thinking about it. For sure, a good book will have some drawing inside. So that's all. A lot of possibilities I see. So I thought it is nice to have this technical skill, like it is maybe something between technical or soft skill thing that you uh, that you are able to draw something. Uh, OK. Um, so the next thing is, uh, um, I didn't change the slide. I was going to say what we will use, not why I didn't fix that slide. So what we will use uh, for that, I will use this, the tool that I'm mostly familiar with, and I'm using it for years, really for years, for drawings. Because I see, and I'm obviously talking with people and seeing what they are using for drawings. So 
typically, and it is also my story, I started from using uh, Visio. Like Microsoft Visio is a tool for drawings, graphs connected with lines. So it seems like a good uh, tool for drawing things. And it is. I do. I did some documentation graph, graphics with the help of Visio, but Visio is still mostly for. For me, it is a tool which is just quite sophisticated tool for connecting rectangles with the lines, with the help of lines. And unfortunately, it also doesn't work uh, well sometimes. So it is just that. It is not a drawing tool. It is block connection tool, let's say. So Visio is one of the choices. Sometimes people are using other um, tools that are most, more dedicated to, to drawings like IO Draw, draw sorry, Draw.io, or maybe on other online tools. But I chose Inkscape a few years ago, and I see also it is a very, very popular tool. So we will go to the Inkscape. I will show you the Inkscape. So the very first thing only to mention for people that are not familiar with the very, very, very basic things, we have, in fact, when we are talking about uh, computer graphics, we have two types of graphics. We have raster graphic and the vector graphic. So the raster graphic is the one uh, that is uh, that is just based on pixels. So you, for example, can run uh, paint.net, uh, open a new file and start to draw. And this is just, those are just pixels. So when I draw something, uh, it is immediately drawn, but I, in fact, couldn't do anything with that. For First of all, I couldn't scale it because it is just a bunch of pixels. In the end also, there are those only pixels. So I cannot, for example, now select this face and move it because this is a bunch of pixels now. So if I want to, I don't know, let's say correct it, I would need to erase this part and then draw the same face again and in the other place. That's all about the raster graphics. So yeah, the raster graphic is not the thing which we are using for such kind of graphic because it is not for uh, it is not for that. It is for painting, simply for animation, for any other thing that is related to uh, uh, to yeah, let's say painting, simply. So on the other hand, we have Inkscape. Uh, um, I hope you see something um, that on the on the screen. This is a Inkscape. Uh, the name is. Okay, for me, like, uh, I don't know what does it mean really, but it's okay. Um, and the Inkscape, what is nice about it, it is a vector graphic uh, tool. So when we draw something, it means we are not drawing pixels, but we are drawing paths. So every time we draw something, every time we draw any shape, we can choose it, we can move it, we can scale it, because it is only the des mathematical description of the path. And now we can transform it, we can rotate it, we can change the scale and uh, other things. So that, that's very nice. And because of that, it really looks very similarly to, for example, Visio and other tools are doing because they are also kind of vector graphic. But the difference is that while they, uh, Visio and other like tools like that are mostly dedicated only for connecting rectangles with uh, lines, Visio, uh, sorry, Inkscape is a full vector-based uh, graphic tool. So we have a lot, a lot of more possibilities, and we can do a lot of things with the help of that. So, for example, uh, I created, uh, mm, I created. Uh, uh let's i will find it i created poster describing the posters describing how the memory look like uh, in case of dotnet what is the organization of the memory and i will show you those posters in a minute so that's uh that's very useful like it is not only for connecting graphs and all by the way it is for some it can be a problem because uh like visio and other tools are for 
connecting rectangles, let's say, uh, uh, Inkscape is not. So we cannot, for example, say I'm connecting now this uh, with this, or I, I don't have any points to attach rectangles, nothing like that. Everything must be done manually. So it may be looking quite lo a lot of, you can, you can scary, you can be looking scary because it is so raw tool, like everything we need to be, we need to do manually. But I will show you ways how I'm overcoming this problem to make things easier. So, okay. Uh, I invite you to ask any questions because it is nice to have any feedback from you or maybe just any ideas. What would you like to see more or in future webinars if you will like it? And uh, just to give me any feedback or our questions probably. So first of all, uh, what I'm doing, I always, we always we start with a blank card and we start to draw something. And today we will draw uh, because recently I'm a part of .NETOS initiative. So we are, uh, let's say, guys created, we, sorry, not created, related to .NET performance. So we wanted to. Okay, sound issue. Uh, the question is what you have heard, what you ha what you didn't. So I will uh, I will very very fastly summarize what I had what I said. Uh, that uh, we will. Sorry for the problem. I forgot that when I went my camera off from the uh, from the stream. Uh, the sound is turned on and turned off, so I need to be visible. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I just was describing you the fact that today we will draw some drawings for this course because I'm in, in general recently doing this uh, course uh, with the help of, uh, all together with .NETOS and I was saying that for the last two minutes, so sorry for, for you for hearing nothing. I was just saying that Okay, today we will be draw making some drawings for the async await part of the uh, about uh, the async await foundation simply. So that's all I was saying. Sorry for the technical issue. I'm all I'm still learning anything, everything. So so that's um, okay. So now let's move on. Uh, I will close this and we will start to uh, share the screen with the uh, with the application itself with the Inkscape. 
uh, you can confirm that you hear now because it would be really really sad if i will be not uh, if you will not hear me from now because i'm now going to describe the the inkscape itself so you can say some yes uh, <clears throat> Okay, I, I assume I assume uh, you hear me. I hope so. So yes, there is a question whether it is whether I have some prototypes on paper, and it indeed I sometimes I did some prototypes. Sometimes I just starting on the blank page. For today's draw, for the today's drawing, I did some prototype. It is very let's say sketchy thing to just to think loudly on the paper what i would like to draw without no specific uh, let's say details just uh, over overall uh, idea sometimes sometimes i'm just opening and start to draw so okay we assume that we are doing a graphics for a course so it will be in the full hd uh, resolution so the very first thing is when we start to use inkscape is to change the is to change the uh, size of the paper because we, we are starting from the a4 format so it doesn't apply for our case we are changing to pixels and i don't i hope i don't i remember the full hd uh, resolution correctly if yes i've just changed the um, the resolution now i have the full uh, good uh, resolution full uh, paper with the good ratio and so on uh, um, maybe we can save it uh, to just make sure that it is okay i will save it on desktop because it is the best place for everything so webinar and uh, okay so the very first thing is I'm the most useful thing for me when doing drawings is to use a uh, grid. So instead of drawing like I like you saw that I would just manually drawing something somewhere, we can set something in the in the Inkscape which is called grid. We can add a new grid, and this will really help us to draw things fastly and in a nice aligned way. So uh, I'm just added grid. I've just added grid by uh, setting, is choosing the document properties, choosing the grid tab, and now I uh, added the new grid. So we must say uh, Inkscape is a free tool, so it is not really, really awesome as a free tool. Its interface sometimes is not so perfect, but let's agree that it is a, we can live with that um, considering how much it provides. Okay, so we have added a new grid, and now we need to decide what is the spacing of this grid. So I'm choosing something like round number for programmers, let's say it is uh, 30, uh, 32. So now we see this grid granularity has changed, and uh, we can also change the what is the major grid, um, let's say granularity. So the major grid, you see the major grid is a little bit more thicker and there are those minor grids. So let's say we can say indeed it is good to choose five. Like we now have nice grid uh, of over the whole uh, thing. Let's save it. Okay, so this is the very first thing, and we will be today describing how async async is working in .NET. So we need to, in general, visualize like we have uh, some threads, and those threads are calling some I/O operations. So we consume many threads. But if we use async, thanks to the um, underlying machinery, we are just able to use one single thread. So this is what we will, what we will be describing today uh, with the help of this tool. So obviously we start from drawing rectangles. Uh, when we went, as you see, because I added this grid, I have here the very important uh, very important thing to add. I'm not sure if you see the tooltip name, probably not. I'm not sure. 
this is one of the things that cannot be changed that I cannot move the toolbar, the toolbar position. So here we have an icon which says enable snapping. And, and this means if it is disabled, I can add anything everywhere. But this is obviously uh, very inconvenient. So I'm just uh, enabling snapping. And thanks to that, uh, now when I start to add a rectangle, for example, from here, uh, it will snap to the grid. So now I can draw nice things simply uh, with the help of the something like that. So I've just added some rectangles. I will delete some. And now uh, the interface is not trivial. So sometimes you need to work out with this tool for some time to overcome some problems. So for example, when adding a new rectangle, I was able to snap it, uh, the corners to the grid. But when I'm moving it, uh, when I'm moving the rectangle, now it doesn't snap to the, rec to the grid. So for example, for changing that, I need to add additional option of the, uh, of the snapping uh, toolbar. Now it will snap also the corners during moving of objects. So now I can in very nicely snap, move around things uh, with an aligned, uh, visual, align, visually aligned way. So we need to visualize some upcoming operations. I like to visualize threads with rectangles. And what's important, maybe you have used, uh, probably you have used some uh, vector-based tools or anything like visual, sorry, Visio. Uh, when we have a object, in fact, it consists of two elements. Uh, it consists of the fill and of the stroke. So the stroke is the border of the object and fill is what's inside. And we can choose obviously the color and how we fill an object and how we have the stroke of the object. So uh, we can ch change that the fill is red. I have a pal palette on the, on, on the bottom and uh, I'm just doing this by clicking on the color and I can change the color of the stroke by holding shift and clicking something. So I can, so let's for example, do something like that. I have changed the stroke to yellow, but it is not visible. And here we have uh, quite of various toolbars that, that we can add. I will close all of them. So by default, we don't have any additional toolbars here, but here in the menu, a lot of very interesting, <clears throat> very interesting properties are available. So one of the mostly used is fill and stroke. So when you have, uh, you can choose the fill and stroke and for every object now we are able to change the fill and the stroke of the object. So the fill is green, uh, sorry, blue and the stroke style now can be changed and I'm changing it uh, to, um, to yeah, I changed it to yellow and again, uh, sorry, I was just using it previously and uh, I don't see why it is not visible. Okay. And here is one of the things um, we can do it very precisely as it is a vector graphic. We can zoom, we can zoom out. And uh, as we see, there is indeed this yellow border. And uh, one of the most important properties of the stroke, it is uh, how is the width of the stroke. So when we make it, uh, we, we, when we make it uh, smaller or, or bigger, obviously it influences the, the visual. So let's say we created something so so colorful. Obviously, I will not use it because it doesn't looks very nice. So let's move to I don't know. Let's say it will be a gray uh, with a black border and visible but not to not to uh, not to uh, not to match uh, visible border so now we have created one uh, we can now choose another with the same colors 
and with the same properties, I created new rectangles. And for me now, those rectangles represent a thread, for example, a thread that is doing something in time. So now we add a timeline and now we are going slowly to making something uh, more clear. Uh, I've just, because as I, uh, I'm not describing the basics because every one of you probably has at least once used some graphic art tools. So we have a set of, of tools here, like rectangles, mostly I'm using just rectangles, circles and lines, and it is enough, and obviously text. So now I have added uh, a line, uh, a line which will also have a length. Uh, sorry, width of two. Additionally, what we can add for every line is the marker at the beginning at the end. So if we need an arrow, we are just adding here an arrow. And now we have a arrow describing time. We can add a nice description with the help of text. Let's say that it is a time. Here, when we choose, a, when we have chosen a text as a tool, a new set of uh, properties is we can change the font. Recently, I'm love in a font which is called Montserrat, so I'm part, I'm simply using it everywhere. So let's find it uh, because it looks nice. So we have a time. Uh, now, uh, yes, the text itself contains of a lot of, let's say, edges and corners, so it is not snapped. For me, it is fine, because probably it is not so important. What's important, for example, that I would like to have this time in the center of the line, of this, uh, of this line. So now we can choose another tool, which is called alignment. So there is a tool in here in the object menu. We have an align and distribute. Uh, align and distribute uh, a panel. And with the help of it, we can choose a time. We can choose, uh, with the help of the shift uh, key, we can choose multiple objects, or we can just mark both. And we, can, we are clicking here that we want to center on vertical axis. So now time is in the middle of, the, of this arrow. And for now, it seems like it's OK. Uh, now it is, in, it is centered. And uh, I would like to move it a little bit closer to the to the to the array. Uh, I can do it with co uh, simply using uh, arrows on my keyboard. So it is uh, if I click just arrows, it is moving uh, more precisely. If I shift arrow, it is moving faster. So sometimes I'm just using keyboard for very conveniently and fastly move things around. Because when I'm using up on the down arrow, I'm sure it is only a vertical movement. So no worry about not making it uh, in the center of the line again. OK, so that's that's OK. We have threads now. We will describe this as a threads. And I've I have already a text with a nice font, so I can duplicate it. I can duplicate it uh, with the help of the context menu, or I can just hit Control D. I have now the same. Uh, I'm just using it because I'm lazy. So instead of creating new text, I'm duplicating it. But at least I have the same font now. Uh, with the help of FA uh, function key, I am just changing the, uh, the, the name. Let's say we, it is like that. And obviously, it is like prototyping, so I not, do not expect that it will, in the end, look totally like that. Maybe I will erase something or change something. I'm just out of the totally improvising now, like I would do also when doing this drawing. Now I see that, in fact, this drawing is kind of not centralized, so I'm selecting everything. And uh, I will now I can move it. And holding control, it makes that it will be only in one of the axes. So also, it is one of the ways of moving things only in the in one in by one axis. Also, as you see, as I move, this corner is still aligned to snapped to the grid. So so that's that's okay. We will see. We can move around things later, so it doesn't matter now. So now I have these ni nice rectangles. I can duplicate them just to have a two threads. 
and let's see um, probably it will be okay to have it like that so we have two rectangles they represent two threads uh, this one can be maybe a little bit slower, smaller. Uh, when I have a rectangle, I can modify it. It is an object. And when I select this um, Edit Parts uh, tool, it allows me to change the corners. So I can make it, for example, bigger or smaller. I can move things around. Also, I, when I'm holding Control, it will be just by one axis. And it will snap to the grid. By the way, I have this very nice tool that I can make things round, but I'm not doing that. OK, so now I have a two threads. Mm, and uh, we need somehow to say that we started operation mm, uh, by IO operation. And for that, probably it would be nice to make another graph. I have assumed that they will be just a separate blocks colored in a different way. So let's, I like palettes which are consistent. So let's say we will represent IO operations with the various red, or maybe not red, maybe these ones are better. So we will represent IO operations by some color. So here we started operation. Here we ended operation. Here we started operation. Here we ended an operation. And again, here and here. Let's just, um, OK, so here now we have threads. We have, uh, they are doing something here. They are starting, wait, starting, waiting. OK, that looks nice. We will uh, now need to. Hmm. Let's say that we will somehow mark that thread is doing nothing. So I will just, just add here a line. Here I will add a line, or maybe differently. I will just make this line. And another property of the stroke is not only its width, but we can also change the dash. So for example, uh, it will be just not a continuous line, but it will be a dashed line. Let's choose maybe this one. OK, so now we have something which looks like time not used thread. And because I'm just having this and it has a proper formatting, I will be just duplicating it where I need just to uh, not configure dashes for this many times. OK, with the help of this tool, I will change it. So now we have something like that. We are modifying those paths simply to, let's say, represent threads in time. Mm. OK, so now we have a situation that tries to describe two threads. And regarding to some technical part now, maybe not drawing. Uh, this is one of this is one thread in time. This is a second thread in time, and those block. This block represents that we have started some. Of, there was a code running, C sharp code running, for example, and this code has initiated I/O operation. So at some point, we need to wait for the result. So waiting for the result is illustrated by this graph, in gray block, because it's waiting. So it is like thread is consumed, but it is just waiting. So it's kind of waste of thread resources. And after some time, the result comes from the database, HTTP call, however. So the code is resumed because now we have the data, so we can process this data. So this thread was, this is execution of one method, let's say, and that has done something with data and here another uh, which is doing some things, initiating async, uh, initiating IO call. We wait for it. We await, and then we get a result and we are processing it. The same case in this second thread. This probably means this doesn't make sense because 
we can assume that we have here another block of code doing something, but maybe not initiating any um, IO operation, but simply doing something. We will see how to work out that. So now we want to, let's say, explicitly say that those operations are IO operations are different. So I will choose those two and I will change it to a little bit it, uh, a little different color, those are also a little bit different color. So now we have theoretical description of the code that maybe the you know, the code that initiated three IO calls. Okay. So this is the situation with the regular threads. And now what we would like to have more, probably this should be on the bottom because it is just like probably people expect to have it. And uh, we would like to visualize somehow the fact that indeed it is a operation, IO operation. Hmm. Maybe we will use something like, let's say, database. Typical representation of database is cylinder. So let's say that it is like that. And we will draw it like that. Once again, we need to draw a cylinder simply. Maybe smaller. Okay. Uh, it has the previous properties, the previous, uh, the previous color and stroke. So let's, I don't know what it will be. So let's just make it uh, white with the black stroke without any without any thing more sophisticated. Now we will duplicate it and we need to make something like, hmm, okay, for now let's just move it. We will make it more sophisticated later. So we will think how to move it, make it a, um, more fancy. Let's let's call it data database or HTTP. Okay, database. Data. Data. Um, database. Okay. Let's change the font uh, with our beloved Montserrat. Montserrat database. Uh, we somehow need to represent the fact that it is IO operation conceptually. So we can say that it will be just called waiting, waiting. And I will just duplicate it a few times. I'm not sure if it is nice and if it is good looking, but I don't care for now. I will just try to uh, I will, because it's all vector, I can always change it. So I don't really care at that moment. I'm just prototyping and thinking how to do it. So that's things out, fade, waiting. Uh, okay. Hmm. And mm, this waiting can be illustrated. I'm not yet sure how, but let's say that we will create an arrow. And because I really don't care about aligning this arrow that I will be drawing now, I will just get rid of snapping. So I just disabled snapping and I will, let's say, draw it like that. Or maybe I will just use it as a regular line. And what I like is uh, to make smooth lines for such uh, call. Let's I just need to illustrate now that this code is waiting for a database. So I will change this line by selecting both endpoints and changing it to a Bezier curve. Now I have a Bezier curve, so I can make it something like like that. Okay, uh, I can move it here. Let's say I will just move this point here. Probably arrow will be good here. Mm, and maybe 
it be just good to have it as a dashed line. We will see. Okay, so we have now uh, something like that. Uh, if we du duplicate it and move it and make it uh, horizontally flipped, we have something which will be useful for the uh, second part. We only need to change the arrows. This end is not required an arrow, and this would like to have an arrow. So, yeah, we have just this seems to be too granular. So, I'm immediately changing, let's say, yeah, database. Not sure if it looks nice, but maybe it, maybe it is. Okay. And the same I should now repeat for another. So um, because, but hmm. let's let's do it. So we have to repeat all the all the things. I'm just copy pasting it, moving it closer mm -hmm. here, and, uh, and this is smaller. So I need to compact things. So I will just make it uh, more close to each other. Okay, by modifying curves, okay, it is still to still to okay. let's assume that for now I'm happy with this result, let's say. So we have this waiting. I really don't like this. This one is not looking good, but that's very concerned about. So now we have this, and also for that we need waiting. So uh, another copy paste. I really don't like this text. <laughs> I will delete it for now. Okay, so duplicate, and now it doesn't look good to have it uh, from here. So probably I will just move it here and make it flip vertically. And now I have this. look and now moving things around i will just make it this closer and this so modifying paths is very convenient as you see because it allows us to move things around all this is in the vector graphics so very nice okay and probably I don't like it so much that I will just remove it. I really don't like this. <laughs> it makes me nervous. Probably I will just call it IO without any fancy, uh, without any fancy icon because I have no idea for the icon for now. Okay, so I have this thingy which is describing the code in the regular access. Uh, in the regular multi-threaded environment when we were making a synchronous call. So this is a synchronous call in fact, and we are waiting for the result. So here we start the operation. We have some code that starts the operation. We are waiting for the AO. Then we get the results after the wait. So uh, we can proceed. Now we have our, an irregular code, then the second call, but still waiting losing resources and so on and so on. So this is how the regular code in .NET is working. Probably it will be good to move it by one. Okay, we are disabled snapping, so let's again turn it on. Uh, just make it closer, maybe it looks better. And okay. So this is a regular case when we have just uh, multiple, multiple threads uh, con making some IO calls in a synchronous way. Now it's time to make it how it would look like in case of async in .NET. Uh, so now we need to create the second uh, bunch of threads. In fact, only single thread that will just visualize the same scenario, how it would look like in case of async. I feel I will need more space, so let's just move it uh, the, to the bottom. And then we need to s visualize the same scenario. So 
Uh, so yes, we have to in fact uh, describe the same uh, I/O operations being started. So now I can just duplicate it. Control D. I duplicated the very first operation. Now the second operation starts. Now the uh, first operation ends. We are executing this code. The second operation has started. The, the third operation has started, the second operation has ended, and uh, the um, third operation has ended. Okay, so it is how it looks like, in fact, with the help of the icing, or at least conceptually, because there is uh, some more, more, there are some more needles regarding that, but conceptually, it, uh, it means exactly this, that, that instead of consuming many threads and uh, synchronously waiting for the result, we are reusing the same thread uh, again and again, because it simply is doing and it is freeing. It's, uh, let's say the thread is fret after the operation IO has been, uh, async operation has been started, and then it is free to serve another uh, code. So in the end, it looks like there are no weights, uh, typical weights because we are just uh, our thread is just waiting awaiting in fact to be notified about the fact that the ISync of IO operation has ended but during this awaiting it is perfectly fine for it just to handle different code different HTTP request or anything so in fact this is how it's looking uh, underneath so yeah, conceptually, uh, it is like half an hour, and I've created a very basic, a very basic uh, sketch how I imagine this um, drawing should look. And uh, I'm this threads is just um, I don't make sense because we have threads here and we have thread here, so let's call it just a synchronous IO. And let's call it async. Hmm. Sorry. Maybe we'll call it uh, synchronous. We will see. It doesn't matter really. We don't have to expect to make it perfectly fine at the very first uh, glance. And again, for me, the most powerful thing is the snapping because thanks to that, I will I can produce very nicely, very fastly things, uh, nicely aligned. Obviously, this tool is most this tool and this approach is mostly for drawing kind of immutable drawing. So you are visualizing something, but you don't expect a lot of changes because when I move it now, I need to move everything. And uh, this makes it problematic if I will be moving a lot of blocks. So this is just probably more convenient scenario for Visio, which is automatically at least trying to move connections between blocks. But this is not the scenario that I'm covering. We are just doing a graph, graphics to describe something. And we are not expecting to modify it a lot in the future after months weeks or days even okay so now we have the same scenario probably uh, we need to call the to, to name the threads just to make things more explicit so i will just make it uh, thread one with the lower index and the whole thing i will just make smaller and now we will just name what those lines are just for the better visibility. Thread one, thread, thread, thread two. So yeah, and again, uh, now we see that we need to add those async arrows. So let's move it a little bit uh, to the below add, duplicate it, move it. We have even this properly aligned because 
the rectangles are starting and ending at the same point. So, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, not this. Uh, yeah. This I, I this thing I didn't like. Sometimes it is really hard to hit the thing that we would like to move, but we can help a little, like by moving it by keyboard. And now I can move it like that. And the last one, because now probably it will be just okay to have it uh, from the below. So I will just probably reuse it. The this one again here okay so this quite probably nicely hmm, illustrates the difference between using async code and asynchronous code so technically speaking we are simply more more scalable because we have served free io operations with the help of one thread while in this scenario we needed two threads because during this thread was waiting, another one wanted to do something, so we needed to utilize another thread. The more IO operations happening at the same time, overlapping, the bigger benefit from using async. Uh, OK, anything you probably feel should be added to this graph? Do you find it readable? Do you find it like it describes something or or maybe totally not? Mm, I'm thinking about adding numbers to explicitly say that maybe the coloring is not enough for for for, for pairing, but for pairing we have these arrows, so probably it is okay to understand that this block is continuation after this block ends. So uh, probably that's OK. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking just a minute for me to, to think. If you have any feedback, if you have any ideas what could be added to this, to this, to, to this drawing, it would be really nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this graph is only a visualization. This is this grid, so I can disable it. Uh, so in the end, the result is like that. But it is visualized only for as a visual help. Uh, waiting, waiting. I O. This is not obvious why we have the same color, but probably it means we can get rid of it. Just make it like that maybe maybe yes okay hmm. so Yes, numbers to operations or, le uh, or a legend about uh, about the IO operations. Um, in fact, both are interesting. We can just for a practice both do both, and we will see. I, I didn't mention it at the very beginning, but I expected that it, this webinar should take around one hour. So don't be afraid. I will not keep you here for hours. And in fact, we are slowly ending this drawing. So we can very fastly do a legend uh, here. With the help of the snaps, it will be perfectly fast. Like we can use those and uh, duplication. <laughs> duplication is one of the most powerful thing in Inkscape. Uh, so we are just selecting it and um, Changing the changing the size and let's reuse this one and we can say that it is operation one. Let's change the size to let's say twenty four and then duplicate again because I'm lazy and. Uh, 
operation two, operation three. Just from the from just from the visual point of view, it seems it should be a little bit closer because we have a we have we have too big gap. Uh, okay, so let's assume that it is like that. I'm not sure if it will be left in that version for the for the course because probably I will revise it uh, heavily. But for now, I'm quite satisfied. Let's say uh, with the result. Uh, because I'm expect it will be full screen on the on the slide in the, during the presentation. Probably this is um, uh, probably this is it. Uh, regarding your question, I am drawing everything in Inkscape. So if I'm drawing binary trees, I'm simply doing the same approach. So for example, I'm creating circles uh, or uh, or, uh, or, uh, or squares and creating binary trees. What's nice about this tool is that when I create something, uh, so I have a need for a binary tree, I can just fastly change it. Let's change the, so I have something like that. And now I can create something like that. I can fastly, and I really think like they are in a proper size. So I have now square, which is consisting of two small grids. So the snapping helps me to make those connections. So I can just connect here and here. And I have a building block for a binary tree. I will just choose the proper arrow. It depends what we want to visualize, but let's assume that we want to visualize something which is growing, which has an arrow to the to, to the up. And now I have this basic building block, so I would be drawing it like let's select now this, duplicate it, put it here, and duplicate it. Everything because of the snapping is really easy to draw. Like I, if I want to uh, have that, this kind of visualization, I would just duplicate things and snap them around. And because I like, because I like Bezier curves, which are quite nice in visualization, I will probably make this trick. Again, I will show you that you have a line, which is just a straight line, but you can select the uh, edit path try through mode, select both points with the help of shift, changing it to the segment curve. Now it is a Bezier curve. And we can, again, with the help with uh, uh, snapping very fastly make it looking nice. So I know all the all the arrows would be changed to something like that. Obviously, I, this requires, again, quite a lot of, let's say, manual work. But after some time, you have elements to copy paste and thus reuse. Obviously, this is again for drawing. So now I have a nice drawing. But if I would like to visualize anything bigger, or I would like to move things around that they are fast changing fastly, like I would like to uh, update this drawing a lot of times, I probably will not. Use in you would not use Inkscape simply because it's not for that. Uh, yes, and now. <clears throat> We have something like that. Uh, someone, uh, Marius, uh, you, you have suggested numbers, so it is also very easy. Like, I would probably make it like a number inside a black, uh, black, circle. So I'm just having this. I'm doing a number obviously in Montserrat font. So let's just Montserrat. It is, it should be 
I can zoom to make things. I can zoom it. I can change it to the size probably because it seems to be too big for this particular use case. I'm aligning it, so I'm selecting both and choosing to align both vertically and horizontally. Now I have this nice block that represents a number. I can group it. It is quite common that if you have a lot of uh, had, uh, had a lot of um, similar objects and want to do it with something with that, you can group it. So because now I have two separate objects. So when I move one, this last, the, the previous was uh, in the same location, I can make those both objects grouped. And now it is easier to move it. So now I can very fastly, uh, let's say, make things in order. Oh, and by the way, I deleted the. <laughs> okay, I was so concerned about the below graph that I deleted the uh, IO operation for this. So let's just quickly recreate it. Um, just recreate it by making it um, horizontally aligned. So. OK, so now I can order things in time. I will just make those uh, everywhere. And just to make sure they are in the middle of this, I can align uh, horizontally. In fact, I can align them all horizontally. Do and the same here. And we have numbers. Like now we need to change. so. You see, it requires quite a lot of clicking, but with some of practice, it is really fast operation. Now I really need to change the, the, the number and so on and so on. I will not continue not to bore you too much. In fact, it should be two here. And so on and so on. Maybe I will end this. And you can maybe, maybe you have another questions or you see some things that also could be improved. So you can, that's a good moment now. Uh, eight, four, uh, here we have five. Five here. I will just align it in a minute. And here we have six. Those numbers are good because we can refer to them. If it would be, a, for example, illustration for a blog post, it would be a perfect way of describing things below the, below the graphics. So it would be really, really nice. And in fact, I can copy paste it here. OK. And uh, so just as uh, two things to, to end, not to prolong this webinar too much. First of all, uh, during uh, you can say whether you found it interesting, whether you found it uh, that you probably maybe would like to see another examples. And for now, just a few things, uh, two things for you. So in the end, we have created something like that. Uh, in the in the end, uh, uh, this is in some. This is, uh, in fact, Inkscape is all the time operating on the file which is called SVG, which is a very common vector format. You know it from internet probably. It is also used for vector graphics simply. So you can host it, for example. Uh, but in the end, mostly what I'm doing, I'm simply using it and converting it to a PNG file. And as you are asking, all the images in the book are pro were provided as PNGs simply. And that was fine because PNG is um, not is lose less compression. It does it's not compressed? I mean, it is compressed, but it's uh, not losing any uh, information. So the images looks nice. You can set the size for books. It can be 
thousand pixels because maybe they required it for for, for big day dpi for us which will be just perfectly fine to have it as uh, our target so we created the page as the one which has these properties which has a uh, uh, width and height provided in pixels but now we can export the whole page to any resolution, so it is totally fine. And mostly I'm using PNG simply as a result of it. So now I have a, so I, now I have a result that I will save, and just to show you one thing uh, at the very, very end. Uh, what do I have this? Um, okay, I have it here, I have it here. Uh, .NET OS webinars drawing images. So let's say that I'm saving this as image uh, 01. And now I'm exporting it and I'm really, really happy with the result. I have the result, uh, which is uh, just a PNG with a good quality. And, and the last thing is here. Uh, animations, because someone asked me um, what about animations. In general, I have I'm not even sure if uh, Inkscape directly in any way helps you to uh, create animations. I'm not using Inkscape for that, but for sure you sometimes need animations because you want to visualize things step by step. Like here we have something, now something happens, now something happened, and so on and so on. So for that, we have two approaches. Uh, one of the approaches that sometimes people are using is using layers. So we have this, uh, get, let's say, the final result, result that we want, we would, would really like to achieve. This is the result that would be the last frame of the animation. And we can add some layers. Uh, for example, we can add many layers. In fact, so many layers that steps we need. And with the help of the layers, I would create a layer by layer and every layer would contain duplicated uh, duplicated drawing with some missing parts and it will allow me to draw the drawing but because because of that i would be just uh, exporting the particular layers uh, but i don't like this approach mostly because as you see inkscape gui is a little bit contrived here so <laughs> i have these layers uh, field here but it is very hard to be nicely handled and in fact when we start to copy paste between layers it is just like not very uh, convenient way of doing things so what i'm doing in the end is that i'm creating ma i'm creating many 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 several images simply so i have this final result which let's say is called uh, I will say it as save it as a webinar final, and this is the final image uh, that I'm happy with. So it is important because then it would be much harder to make uh, any changes, although it is still possible. But assume that it is this graphic that with which I'm totally fine to have it in my presentation. So I have this final version, and now I'm simply starting to create copies of it with the missing part. So for example, the very first uh, very first slide in my presentation would be just to say, I'm having a very simple scenario. Um, I'm just getting rid of everything here. In fact, because I would like to describe the situation that we have some thread and it has started some operations. So, so from now I have image 01 SVG. And that's fine. I'm exporting it. Uh, export image 0101. Export. Replace. OK. Now I'm reopening the recent file. So I have the same again. And it is quite demanding process, but I'm totally satisfied with it. So now I know that the next step that I would like to describe is to say that some 
IO operation has been started. So I will get rid of everything here instead of those few those few lines. I need some modification here and I need to put it underneath. Okay, it will be mine. Uh, let's say this is not moving. It will be my second image. And image by image, I'm creating simply the number of images that I need. It is, I know it is probably not the perfect solution, but for me it's my, fine, mostly because I'm not doing so many animations. Most of our my, my graphics are static. Uh, but just to show you the final result, result how I imagine it should look like, here, here we have a image 003. Well, uh, open, I should export it. So I'm exporting it as image 03. Uh, image 02 should be also exported. Export the whole page. Uh, save it. Reopen image, which is final. And uh, I would like to show the situation that the operation has ended. So I get rid of everything but this. Okay. <laughs> so it will be image uh, number three. This is a particularly oh not not the place. This is a particularly complex scenario because we have a lot of steps. Typically, if I do something like that, there will be only a few steps, so there is a lot less uh, work. But this particular scenario seems to be quite complex because we have a lot of steps to cover in such a graphic. Okay, so now I have created four images. Obviously, I will not keep you here to watch all the steps being done. Uh, I created, in fact, four SVG images. And if you look at the result, now is the part about presentations. Uh, so let's share the, what I should share to see you. Uh, I should share probably the whole screen. I was doing this, where I was saving all those files? That's a good question. <laughs> So uh, slowly ending, any more questions while I'm just preparing the last demo? Oh, it was all on the desktop. OK, desktop is. Just a few seconds for me because I need to dot metas webinar. Okay, dot metas webinar images. That's fine. Dot metas uh, webinar drawing images image. Yes, plan to ML as you Mario uh, you are asking I really, really like using plant UML for more strict uh, drawings when, for example, I have uh, uh, trainings about uh, design patterns or other stuff and I want to draw classes and relations between them. Plant UML is a very nice tool to do that out of the code, let's say, uh, because I really don't care so much about the visual aspect. And maybe I should emphasize this even more before. Uh, I'm mostly choosing Inkscape because, as you saw, it is quite complex, but it allows you to control the feel, full visual sides of it. So if I need colors, fancy, fancy curves and connections and a lot of texts, it is uh, for sure now, uh, for me, the Inkscape is the best choice. If I need only a few graphs, make it fast um, Inkscape, sorry, plant UML is also quite a good tool for me, uh, but for different scenarios. Okay, so now we have this situation that 
uh, I've created simply those four graphics. So simply one by one, I can now describe them uh, in, and I have an animation, right? This is totally fine for me uh, because it worked. And I have a nice visual uh, step by step. And because I'm using Remark.js, I'm not sure if you are aware of Remark.js, but I'm using Remark.js for uh, anything like related to making presentations. Remark.js is a way of creating presentations uh, from the from the markdown. So here you can see. I will change. Sorry, not not this view not the whole screen, but the application. So in Remark.js, you are simply describing your slides in Remark. So you have this presentation that I'm showing you now is written in Remark. And uh, adding those images is as simple as copy pasting few, few lines of code. So for me, it is OK. Like I have image uh, 01 and successive slides will be just a few of them. So in a few keystrokes, I have a presentation consisting of those two, four images. So now I can show you the result. Uh, the result is that I will stop the screen sharing and I will again start to share the presentation and I've just updated it and now I have this in my presentation so it looks nice and I'm totally uh, satisfied with the results okay so in general for that is totally fine probably to end now I just it was very very free let's say fast grasp at my way of working with images and with the help of that, I created many things like, as I said, all drawings in my book were created with the help of this approach. And uh, I would like to show you also the result, like, for example, this dot not memory management poster, but I don't remember where it is. Books. Nice. Where is my book? I don't I don't remember where is the book that I wrote. That's that's not very good. Um, um, use tools landing. Okay. I, I I starting to Recall where it is. Okay, just one view to show you at the end. Uh, stop sharing and start sharing. Share the... Okay, so this, for example, .NET memory management port poster is also whole created in Inkscape with exactly the same approaches. All this is aligned thanks to uh, thanks to snaps, being to grids, and we can still modify it. All this is vector, all this could be modified. All those are Bezier curves, so I can modify things, move around, and uh, I really like it. And this is where I find this tool useful because doing it in any tool like Visio uh, or Plan2ML, obviously not, but Visio or Draw.io would probably be too complex and it would be much less visually um, pleasing. And with the help of uh, Inks Inkscape, we are able to create such stuff. So so that's nice. OK, uh, for me, that is probably a good point to, to end. 
Uh, just one minute, but I probably ask you for questions many times, so I will not prolong it any longer. So that's all from me. Very, very, very thank you for attending. I hope you have learned something. I hope you have maybe you are a little bit even inspired to try it out. Uh, Inkscape is free. You can download it. Uh, it's even open sourced as far as I remember. So that that's just try it out and in your nearest future. If you would like to ask me anything about using Inkscape, there is a Twitter handle here that you can see. So just reach me on the Twitter probably will be the best and the simplest way to do that. So thank you very much for today. Thank you for attending the webinar and have a nice day. Bye. See you next time.